Okay, uh, trace route. What is trace route? Trace route is a networking tool, just like Netstat, Ping, and other tools that is used to discover the path between some source and some destination that you specify. By default, the source is your computer, and you can give the name uh, of the destination or the IP address. Uh, in this case, Ausat.com is just a popular newspaper that I like. So there are multiple IP addresses uh, associated with it. One of them is 104.20.60.100, this one. So how does Traceroute actually work? Well, it sends a series of messages that are modified in a way so that these messages are dropped at each hub. Okay. Uh, all the messages are actually destined to the same destination, which is 104.20.60.100 in this case. But they are meant to be dropped at different tops. Uh, first, uh, what kind of messages are sent by Traceroute? Well, by default, they are UDP messages, okay? Uh, but they can be TCP, GRE, ICMP, or any others. You can change the options. We'll not talk about this in this video. Okay, so how are these messages modified so that they get dropped? There is a field in the IP header called TTL, or time to live, okay? And this header can be put uh, to one or two or three or four. If you put it, if you set it to one, or if Traceroute set it to one, it will be dropped, I mean the packet, the UDP packet, will be dropped at the first hop, which is my home router in this case. If the TTL is two, the UDP message will be dropped at this hop. If it's three, it will be dropped here. Why is that? Well, because uh, when a router receives any IP packet, It'll, before forwarding it, it, it will decrement TTL by one. Why does that? Well, to prevent loops in computer networks so that the packets are not forwarded infinitely. Okay, um, so because it does that, because we want uh, the first hop to drop it, to drop the UDB packets, we set the TTL, or the trace route sets the TTL to one. And when that UDB packet gets the first hop, it decrements TTL, it becomes zero. So the hub drops the UDB message and gives feedback. And that feedback is what trace route is looking for. What is that feedback? Well, it depends on what was sent. If what was sent is UDB messages, then the feedback would be ICMP TTL exceeded or time exceeded type 11 ICMP type 11 message okay and this kind of message is sent by all the routers because if when traceroute puts the TTL to 2 it will get the to the first hub okay the TTL will be decremented by 1 and then it will forward it to the second hub the second hub will decrement the TTL by one, and by that time it will be zero. So the second hub will drop it and send ICMP a message to us. Uh, if we want, I mean, when Traceroute wants a feedback uh, from the third hub, it sends a UDB message in this case with a TTL of three, so that it will get to the first hub and decrement it by one, decrement it by one also at the second hub, and lastly decrement it by one at the third hub, and then the third hub would send the ICMP message. That ICMP message is very important because it contains information that Traceroute wants. It contains the IP address. 
of the uh, of the hub okay and also trace route can use that message to count the end to end delay between the source and uh, this hub okay or the round trip time okay we should also notice that all of these are routers all of these are actually routers except the last one the last one is actually the destination so in this case there are 11 routers 11 routers but there is actually one uh, destination in this case in this case it's a server uh, which belongs to outside.com okay before looking at Wireshark uh, we want to look at this output the first column is just a number the second one is the name of the router if it has a name okay the third one is the IP address for the router okay of that top uh, the three these three columns uh, are the RTT round trip times why do we have three well because traceroute sends three UDP messages okay to each hub not only one if traceroute would send only one if you would change the options so that traceroute would send only one UDP you will see only this one one column not three but since it sends three you see three round trip times in milliseconds and uh, why three probably because as you can notice uh, there is a difference between them so the average is better okay all right now let's actually uh, look at Wireshark now these are we will look at the UDP messages as well as the ICMP replies this is the first UDP message sent from traceroute to the final destination of ausa.com 104.20.60.100 it has a TTL of 1 the second one also has a TTL of 1 to the same hub as I said three UDP messages sent to the same hub if you don't change the default so TTL TTL of 1 again the third one also has TTL of 1 but the fourth and fifth and sixth should have a TTL of 2 let's check yes we'll check the sixth it has a TTL of 2 and so on if you check a random one like here the TTL is now 10 which is meant to be dropped by the 10th uh, hub now before I talk about ICMP if we investigate the UDB messages I mean the destination ports the destination ports are between uh, 33434 and 33534 so 100 ports I guess they're chosen carefully I mean the destination shouldn't be listening on these ports so that it would reply with ICMP destination unreachable port unreachable okay because that's what traceroute is looking for traceroute is not looking for some port that the destination is actually listening on it wants a port that is not reachable anyways now look, let's look at the ICMP messages uh, but first we should notice that there are less ICMP messages than the UDP why is that well because not all the routers replied not replied but not all the routers given us um, ICMP messages okay not all of them why well, according to the man page of Traceroute, some of these routers uh, may have may replied with ICMP messages with 
a very short TTL time, maybe one, two, three, or whatever, but it's short, it's shorter than it can get to us. So that may be one reason. Another reason, uh, maybe some of these routers do not reply with time exceeded or TTL exceeded which trace route is looking for. So that, those may be the reasons. That's why actually we have gotten three ICMPs from the first router. So the source is this one, this one, this one, the same source. Sorry, this one and this one and this one. I'm, I'm looking at the ICMPs. This one. Okay. We didn't get any ICMPs from all of these. We get only two, one and two, from this one. Let's check them out. Yes, 192, 192. These, we get only two, we didn't get three. Okay. That's actually it. There is one more thing I want to say, which is uh, not all the ICMP messages are the same. The messages that we get from routers, from hubs, is time exceeded or time to leave exceeded. But the messages that we get from the server itself are different. Those are destination and reachable, destination and reachable, destination and reachable, port and reachable. Okay? And this is what Traceroute is looking for to know that it has reached the destination or the UDPs has reached the destinations. Uh, I may make another video to talk about the different options that we can put or set for Traceroute. Thank you.